gather virtually or physically, we too are yearning for presence and peace and help. We come to worship this Sunday morning, February 28th, 2021, here at Northminster United Church. Our Christ candle is lit to focus our hearts and minds on this time together as we seek to deepen our love for God and how we share that with the world. We also take a moment to pause in gratitude, remembering that we live, work, worship, and play on Treaty 7 land. We continue our Lenten season of healing as we focus on health as essential to our spiritual lives. God gathers us as a beachcomber, gathers and marvels at every precious surviving piece of beach glass that they find. We are never alone. We are never lost to the one who seeks humanity's wholeness. We affirm together today our commitment to be the body of Christ that knows we cannot be personally healed until we see that interconnected community as part of the process of healing. Jesus has the power to re-envision the family of God in which false boundaries are overcome. And in a year of such devastating loss of of livelihood and connection and all these important pieces of our lives, we consider today the economic health also that reimagines the status quo. Let's acknowledge our need to restore and repair and renew our holy vessels, which include the communities we are a part of. Join me, let's pray. God of all, you created us for each other. You set in us a yearning for companionship and an empathy that binds us together, protecting each other and delighting in one another. Yet too often, God, we have broken down our relationships instead of building them up. We have been set against one another with the lie of scarcity. We have built systems and economies that widen the gap of resources rather than safeguarding equitable practices. Too many and growing numbers are are suffering hardship and food insecurity, and joblessness, we cannot fathom the proportions of loss. And so we look away, sometimes even from the need of our own community. Help us, healer God, show us our empathy, forgive our complacence, move us to move one step at a time toward greater care for one another.
know this. This love and security is meant for all people, no matter what. We are capable of sharing our light and not running out of enough. Christ's hospitality that broke through false boundaries points the way for, for you, for me, for all. So take a deep breath into this truth. Fill us more fully and let us breathe out with the relief of assurance. Having that assurance, we then share the peace with each other. And as we do that, I invite you to imagine a warmth that surrounds you, extending to those who may be next to you in close proximity, or extending to those who are close in spirit with you, if not anyone physically present in this moment. And imagine that warmth extending beyond your walls to your neighborhood, to your wider community, to your church, and, and see that warmth and that peace spreading like the rising sun. Let it expand to all the world. Let this be our peace. Peace be with you. Amen. Let's now sing together a hymn, Gather Us In.
for many of our For many of our church communities, the place where we worship, the space where we worship, is called the sanctuary. And I know how many of you, so many of you, are missing this space to be in uh, right now. And we're, we're missing our sanctuary so much. Did you know that the sanctuary doesn't actually mean the churchy place where we have pews, and beautiful windows and banners and the the place where God plays the organ when no one is here. That's not what sanctuary means. Sanctuary actually means a safe place. There are lots of different kinds of sanctuaries. For example, you've probably been to to a a bird sanctuary, a place where um, birds can go and live and be safe without fear of hunting or or habitat destruction. Or maybe you know of elephant sanctuaries. You've heard of those places that, again, it's a safe place where elephants are, are free to live and not have to worry about poachers. So a church sanctuary is any place where people come, where God's people come, where everyone then comes to feel safe, where they can name all their feelings from happiness and anger and sadness and loss, fear, whatever our emotions are. It's a place where we can come, where we feel safe, knowing we are safe in in God's love and in community with one another. One of those huge challenges that we've had this year is that in order to live up to a sanctuary being a safe place, place. It's me. It's meant that for most of our churches, we've had to postpone in-person worship because it wasn't just a safe place because of the virus, the pandemic. Other churches have been able to meet in very small numbers, and they've helped to create that safe place, that sanctuary space by keeping distance, wearing masks, wearing, using hand sanitizer, not singing, not eating, not, not being too close together. So there's different ways that we've been able to maintain sanctuary, safe space, and what that means for us. But can you imagine how much work has gone into maintaining that safe space? And yet still, at the same time, it just doesn't feel the same, does it? That we were missing this safe place to be in person. And even if we are, it's not the same. So we have to think then about something else we could have that would make us feel at home, give us that sanctuary space. Maybe you have a prayer shawl, or maybe you have a blanket. I have my prayer shawl here today. This was a gift from my colleague spouse who filled in for me on my first maternity leave. And on my first Sunday back, this beautiful prayer shawl was given to me um, when I was still in Didsbury. And so I I keep this in my office because I like to have it on a cooler day, um, be able to wrap it around my shoulders, or maybe in a time when I'm not having the best day and things aren't going as I'd hoped, it feels good just to wrap it around my shoulders. And it's, it's that sense of softness and that sense of, reassuring, being reassured, being um, comforted in that way. So if you have a blanket or prayer shawl you can grab right now, I encourage you to do that. Um, If you don't, you can grab one later and still remember this bit of reflection around this feeling of comfort and safety and creating that sanctuary space um, when we're at home. But as you do put that around your shoulders... When you grab that shawl or that blanket, I would like you to remember this, that when you wrap this around your shoulders, that you, you remember your whole church community, like we're giving you a hug right now, or you remember your friends and your family who would like to be giving you a big hug right now. Imagine God is giving you a big hug and how, and how during this difficult time that we still have God with us when we haven't been able to experience as much healthy touch as we need. But the love is still there. 
So as we keep our blankets or our prayer shawls around us, on our laps, around our shoulders, um, I'm going to say a special blanket or prayer blessing right now that every time we wrap these around ourselves, that we can feel that safe place, that sanctuary space to express our truest selves, express and know and feel that healing touch of God's love. I also, before this prayer, just want to remind you, we have prayer shawls at the church that we would love to share with you so you can feel your faith community with you. Um, You can pick one up at the church. We can deliver one. So please reach out and say, yes, I'd love a prayer shawl. Let's pray and bless these blankets and shawls. Loving God, please bless these blankets and shawls so that whenever we wear them, we can feel the warmth of your love. We can feel the healing touch of your hands. We can feel safe to be our truest selves. Amen. Our scripture reading for this second Sunday of Lent is taken from Matthew 8, verses 5 to 13. When he entered Capernaum, a centurion came to him, appealing to him and saying, Lord, my servant is lying at home paralyzed in terrible distress. And he said to him, I will come and cure him. The centurion answered, Lord, I am not worthy to have you come under my roof, but only speak the word and my servant will be healed. For I also am a man under authority, with soldiers under me, and I say to one, go, and he goes. And to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and the slave does it. When Jesus heard him, he was amazed and said to those who followed him, Truly I tell you, in no one in Israel have I found such faith. I tell you, Many will come from the east and west and will eat with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the heirs of the kingdom will be thrown into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And to the centurion, Jesus said, Go. Let it be done for you according to your faith. And the servant was healed in that hour. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God.
there's so much that we don't know about the story that Dawn just read for us. We don't know about how a Roman centurion would have heard about Jesus. We don't know anything about his military career. We don't know why he changed his mind after first asking Jesus to come to him and then sending servants telling Jesus he didn't need to come, but then only to speak the word of healing. We don't know why he cared so deeply about this one who needed healing. We don't know what the faith was of the servant, if he was Jewish or something else. And if he was Jewish, maybe that did play a part in why the centurion suddenly felt so sympathetic toward the elder, or maybe then to get Jesus. That maybe was the connection. We don't know what happened to either that servant or the centurion after the encounter with Jesus. So there's just so much we don't know. It leaves us to our imagination and our wondering. It's rather bold to approach Jesus with the assumption that he will grant the authority and the ability to heal a paralyzed man. But that's what the centurion does. He does just that. And his boldness, I think, was a real endorsement of his faith. It even says Jesus was amazed. In granting his request, Jesus is doing what he's always done for so long through, his, through, through all his teachings, what, what we are looking him to model for us. What he's done again in this text is he's transcending those cultural barriers, those boundaries that try to keep people in their place. And so he's, he's transcending this again in extraordinary ways. This army commander, a Roman, a non-Jew, is not at all part of any of the community who would have been Jesus' followers. And the servant for whom he's advocating, again, we say we don't know what his faith was, but in all likelihood, he would have been a Gentile and a slave. He would have been the ultimate nobody to so many people. And so none of this matters to Jesus. Jesus came along to bring healing, salvation, grace, fulfillment, whatever that might be, wholeness, to everyone. And he shows this again in this story that Jesus is longing to expand that community for community to grow. <clears throat> At the point in this gospel, the disciples had just come from the Sermon on the Mount. And that's a real high point, haha, note the pun, not just because it was on a mountain, but it was a real high point of Jesus' teaching. And so these disciples would have been really revved up with his message and the crowds and the whole experience of just having heard some of the most powerful and memorable words that Jesus had ever spoken. So then maybe coming to this point in our story today, it felt to the disciples like, well, they're just back to reality now, right? So sort of like the way we feel after we get home from a really great holiday do you remember those days? It's been a while, hasn't it? But like getting home from a really great holiday and now you're back to reality. Sometimes we feel like that too after say Christmas holidays and then it's January, back to reality. Or after summer and then school starts. You know, that back to reality feeling I think is where the disciples would have been uh, around this encounter today with Jesus and the Roman centurion. In the church, we don't call it reality time, we call it ordinary time. It is part of um, a season of the church year that's not, it's not Lent or, or Epiphany or something that's more of a higher season that marks a specific time of year, but it's just an ordinary time and where we, we hear it through the lectionary many of the stories of, of Jesus and of our, our Old Testament and so on. But it doesn't mean what it sounds like. It actually means that we are in ordinary time. It just means this reality time, this ordinary time is, is full of the Spirit. And, and we all are. And so 
so then every single day, we can't just let things go because, well, it's just ordinary time. It's back to reality. Instead, when it means everything is full of the Spirit, it means that every single day is the opportunity for a Spirit sighting, you might say. It's an opportunity for someone, for us, to hear about Jesus, either because of what we say or because of how we live. We have these moments every day. Um, and so I think this is what makes the church different, that our normal time, maybe after moments of exhilaration or stimulation like it would have been for the Sermon on the Mount, it's still never normal. But it, it's an opportunity where we are able to imagine and interpret normal through the Spirit. We look for those glimpses. We, we live up to every moment so that others might glimpse the Spirit at work as well. So like what you live on a Sunday morning or when you, when you come to church in person here or, or online right now, what you experience, say, on a Sunday morning or after an event when we've been together or after some sort of connection, even on Zoom, and I can connect and talk to everybody, whatever it is, whatever these opportunities are, after you've had these opportunities... What comes next? Is it just back to reality time, back to ordinary time? But no, it's, it's you, it's your life, it's your choices, it's you. It has to be different because of those encounters, those moments, those experiences as part of this faith community. That coming away from those moments and now taking that with you in what you do and what you say every single day. So that's ordinary time. It's, it's full of spirit and taking it with us from our, from our moments, our experiences into the everyday. Do you, do we have the, the strength? Do we have the boldness to approach Jesus directly like the centurion did? Do we have the, the courage to appeal to Jesus on behalf of others? To, to speak up, to work for justice, um, equal rights, um, accessibility, for example, to hold um, people accountable, uh, to encircle people and embrace and encourage and inspire. Do we have the strength to do that, to reach out to Jesus that we can ask all of these things on behalf of others? In what ways are we approaching Jesus? Do we believe that through Jesus, we can do all of those things, that we can bring about healing and community? This story is also about hope. It's about the inbreaking of the kingdom. The story is the vision of the kingdom in which all people come together to enjoy one another, to feast at the table of God. God gathers us all. God longs for us to be together, to be safe, that sanctuary place, to be whole. And God gives us the, the ability to, bring, um, to help bring this vision to fruition. Lent is a great time for reflecting, so I'll ask a few more questions of you. I already did, but when we think about that, then in what ways is Northminster living out this vision of, of bringing people together in ways where everyone is safe and whole? In, in what ways are we bringing people together? For example, it's why we have the affirming ministries conversations. It's saying we're welcoming, is that enough? Knowing how we are fully safe and welcoming for all because of our affirming ministries process takes that one step further. So in what ways are we bringing people together? How are we, through Jesus, bringing healing and wholeness to our communities God gathers us, and so God calls us then to be gatherers because none of us are, are free or whole until all are free and whole. 
It's why we also do things like our, our partnerships with the city of Calgary, being leaders in conversations around truth and reconciliation. It's why we give to the Mission and Service Fund, because we know there are so many partners who do such great work for justice and healing. It's, it's why we work locally with our Aboriginal Friendship Center to, to again, um, speak and advocate when others might not be able to. Part of my role, maybe even my primary calling, uh, is to help you as a congregation view the world through God's eyes. It's how we try more so to, to see the world as God wants it to be. To live life as God needs us to live so the world might know God's love. And preaching that kind of truth can be risky sometimes, but then I also get to preach resurrection. And when we preach resurrection alongside these other messages, it is so rewarding. It's about us being able to work for what we hope and envision. It's to invite and welcome and embrace and work alongside. Reverend uh, Yvette Flunder, she's one of my favorite preachers, she, what she says about the kingdom of God and all of our part in this, she says, it ain't coming unless we bring it. That's her line. It ain't coming unless we bring it. It is up to us, each and every one of us, to show our faith like the centurion did, to say yes and to participate and work and pray and risk together. And if we want a future that is about God's kingdom being alive and well, I should say it's probably God's kingdom is always going to be there even without us, but maybe we need to ask, do we really want, does our congregation really want to be a part of all that God is doing? I hope the answer is yes. So if we really want to be a part of a future that is about God's kingdom being alive and well, and if we want to bring about this healing and hope which we all so desperately need, that is the resurrection moment. That is what Easter is promising as it lies ahead of us. And so we journey toward that. Amen. Let's sing.
Let's move into our time of prayer. If you have any prayers you would like to name, to share them in the comment section of the Facebook feed, prayers for yourself or someone you know, a situation in the world, prayers of, of thanks, concern, um, whatever, whatever it might be, please do share so we can lift those prayers together. Let's pray. Healer of our every ill, especially our, our concern of separation and fear. We come before you to make our petitions known. Hear our cries for healing of body, mind, and spirit. We know that already you are at work among us, showing us the way to recover and recovery from the toxicities of our grief of our time. As broken pieces scattered and separated, we trust that you are seeking us, gathering us into wholeness, calling us to join you in the quest. We pray this day especially for those who are experiencing the loss of livelihood and economic security and are feeling helpless to care for their families. We pray for those whose, busy, whose businesses have gone under or are on the precipice of survival or closure. We pray for those whose disparity of resources has been made even more pronounced during this pandemic. We pray grateful thanks for the efforts of all who have been searching for solutions, have given generously for months of time and resources to alleviate suffering of those they know and do not know. We ask for encouragement and passion to reevaluate how we as a church can help now and into the future. We have a number of prayers this morning. A prayer request from Sarah for her work colleague Scott, who has been diagnosed with lung cancer. A prayer request from Margaret. Prayers for those waiting to get their vaccines. From Shauna, a prayer for her sister-in-law's mother and sister who are both receiving cancer treatments. A prayer, continuing prayers from Michelle for little Miss Sophia, that little preemie we've been holding in prayer, part of their extended family, and for her parents. And a wonderful prayer for Ty as he completes his confirmation today. Prayers from Phyllis for her brother Len and his wife Patty, who are both fighting stage four cancer. Prayers from, from Margaret uh, for those that are living in loneliness and missing their family and friends. I also had two other prayer requests come to me this week. One is from Susan Smith for her dear colleague of 35 years, uh, Nasha's brother-in-law suddenly died. He lives in the UK, and it's just so far and likely the inability to be there with them. Um, so prayers for the Pierre Mohammed, Pierre Mohammed family in their time of grief. And prayers for Jean Carter. Jean had a fall this week and is so sore, and so we, we pray, Jean, for your fast healing at this time. Also a prayer from Shauna this week for, uh, for Lyndon's family as his grandma passed away. We hold you all in prayer. Please do continue to share prayers as you, um, as you, may, as you may think of them. Let's gather all those prayers, the prayers we've spoken and the prayers we hold in our hearts, and let's say together the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Each Sunday of Lent, we are participating and sharing in a ritual action for the week. We have all this beautiful beach glass here at the church. Many of you were able to pick some up from here, from Northminster. Maybe you have your own at home. We still have more we'd love to share, so don't hesitate to reach out, and we'd love to give you some of this beautiful glass. The words we heard this week of uh, Jesus' healing story were, I will come. And when faced with a request, Jesus makes a move and seeks out to come to help someone who was previously seen as an outsider of help's embrace. Jesus moves outward to gather and heal someone unlikely to have crossed his path otherwise. And that reminder again that all are safe within the circle of God's keeping. So I invite you now to take your beach glass if you have it nearby. And if you also have a bowl, or you can get one later, what not, put, put that glass in a bowl this morning, some sort of little vessel. And as you do so, I'd like you to think about the people that you have encountered or that you have heard about in the last few months who are suffering because of lack of support. So what could we do, again, we ask ourselves to reach out, to focus on healing those parts of our human community that we don't always take time to think about enough? To what part of our community will we speak the words of Jesus and say, I will come? So then shift your thinking to your own need to be cared for, to be held, that in your own need, what makes you feel safe? What connections do you need to to strengthen, to heal any isolation you may be feeling? And if you are in need of something, consider this an invitation to let someone know what you need need without feeling embarrassment or shame about it because Jesus always asks and invites us. So take some time to think about those questions and and then when you're ready at some point in this week um, again hold that bowl hold this bowl which contains your sea glass to breathe deeply inviting that spirit to live and move in you in a special way that helps strengthen your connection to others and and your role in making someone else's life more safe. So keep the bowl in a place where you can see it regularly, maybe on, maybe it's a table centerpiece, so you see it at every meal, maybe on your nightstand or your desk next to your computer, wherever it might be that you see it and it's there when you need it. Amen. Our, scripture, our scriptures often address impossible situations, even today's did. But think about them all, all those situations. How did Moses really part the sea? Or how did all the animals fit on the ark? Or how did Jesus heal all those people? How is Jesus alive after death on the cross? We explore those questions, we answer them with our faith from our heart, and we give our offering, our financial gifts, the same way, in hope that God can do what sometimes feels like the impossible. Let's bless the many ways we give. Let's pray. God, you have promised that if we reach out in faith, you will take our gifts that we have given 
and by your grace transform them into what you need to further your kingdom here on earth. We give in hope. We give in faith. And we trust in your blessing on our gifts. Amen. Let's do a few announcements now. Um, of course, after church every Sunday on Zoom is coffee and conversation. And it's the same Zoom link every Sunday. So if you have it already, give it a click. If you don't have it, by all means, reach out to me um, from now till coffee time with a quick text or email, a phone call. I'll be happy to send you the link again. Um, also, this week, we have Friday night, we have crafting night for those who'd like to gather on Zoom, bring your own project, and just share in conversation together Friday night. We have a really amazing opportunity coming up for all our youth, grades 6 and up, at Northminster. This is a joint project between McDougall United and ourselves and Woodcliffe. We have a guest speaker on Zoom who, is, um, who works at U of C. She's also the Affirming Ministries Coordinator at McDougall. Her background is in education around consent and bystander intervention. So she's going to be speaking with our youth, really engaging ways, activities, a couple videos around what do healthy relationships look like? What does consent mean? Why is consent important? So please do mark March 13th on your calendar. This isn't just for our current youth group kids, but all of you out there who have grandkids, neighbors, this is something you can make them aware of, and we'd be happy to sign them up and include them in this this wonderful event on March 13th, a very important conversation for our young people. Easter's coming up about five weeks away now, and we are planning the most wonderful all ages Easter play. There is lots of parts, and we want children, youth, and adults to, to join in the fun. Um, it's going to be, nothing, nothing has to be memorized. You should know how to use Zoom. But even if you don't, we'll make it work for you. We'll find a way. So let me know as soon as possible that you'd like to join in on the Easter play to celebrate um, Christ's resurrection for April, April 4th. It's not that far away. And we've just got some updates with our Kids Zone program. Uh, we're introducing a third age group again because we have quite a large middle group that's feeling a bit too grown up for the younger class and doesn't quite fit in with the senior high of youth group yet. So have a look at these three age groups and opportunities to, to join in on some, some fun and some spiritual development uh, with these great programs. That information, all the other information I've named and so much more is in your Friday email. So do take time to read that or sign up if you don't get it yet. Like that your annual report is due if you're part of a committee or a group of some kind. Um, Barb will take those until Tuesday morning at 9 when she's back in the office. So get your reports into her, please, in the next couple days if you haven't already. I think that's all I have for announcements. Uh, so we'll move now into our blessing to end our, our time of worship together. As I said last week, and as is our theme today, we are working in Lent on healing for ourselves in this season, but we're also working toward something communal. And the needs are so great, especially now. So go with confidence that the holy beachcomber is gathering us all for safekeeping, recovering our depth of love for all, and our joy of living in this world. May the words of Jesus today ring true in your ears, I will come. And may the Spirit hover and move and deliver salve to your soul and a spring in your step. Amen. So let's go out singing, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.
Thank you.